Hi everyone, I am Dr. Ila Chen Khandelwal and I am back again with the next module on Hematology Images students and in this module we are going to discuss the images from red blood cells as well as a few miscellaneous images, right? I promise you people students that the images which we are going to do in this module are extremely important for all the MCQ exams whether it is INICT, NEET or FMGE, right? So just before your MCQ exams whenever you are revising images or pathology please go through this module or all these images, right? Uh, so so let us start with the first Im uh, for the image students in this section we are going to discuss the rbc abnormalities on a peripheral smear right so when a pathologist sees a peripheral smear what are the things which i can see in the rbcs right first of all let us see this image students in this image can you appreciate these red blood cells which are here these rbcs do you think these rbcs are normal Whenever I draw normal RBC, it is like this. It has a central one-third pallor. Can you see any pallor in these RBCs? Notice all of these RBCs. I don't see any pallor, right? They are consistently pink or purplish, whatever color, right? So, there is no pallor. And also see that there, there is a reduction in the size and they are quite rounded, right? So, that is why what are these cell students? These are called as the spherocytes, right? Where will you see spherocytes on a peripheral smear? So, whenever I see spherocytes, I have to think of four things in the DD. Hereditary spherocytosis, autoimmune hemolytic anemia, burns, and blood transfusion reaction, right? Now, if the examiner asks you what is the most common cause of spherocytosis on a peripheral smear, the answer is not going to be hereditary spherocytosis, but it is going to be autoimmune hemolytic anemia. It is the most common cause of autoimmune hemolytic, uh, sorry, hereditary, uh, 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 autoimmune hemolytic anemia is the most common cause of spherocytosis on a peripheral smear. Understood? The answer is not hereditary spherocytosis, right? Sometimes the examiner can give this kind of a peripheral smear and ask you what kind of a test will you do. So, you will do both the osmotic fragility test and also the Coombs test. If the Coombs test is positive, I'll go towards the diagnosis of AIHA and if the uh, osmotic fragility test is positive, I'll go towards the diagnosis of hereditary spherocytosis. Understood? Easy? Okay, let's move to the next slide. Very interesting students, these are the normal RBCs. Now, I hope you can compare them with the spherocyte. These have a central pallor and that is one third approximately, right? Can you appreciate this RBC student? Don't you think it appears as if somebody has come and bitten off this RBC, right? That is why these are called as the bite cells. Somebody has bitten off these RBCs, right? And also students, uh, when you, we do a vital stain on them, uh, what uh, the vital stain is brilliant chrysalis blue or new methylene blue, what we see are Heinz bodies, right? If the examiner asks you, bite cells and Heinz bodies are seen in, answer is G6PD deficiency, right? So, the peripheral smear questions can come in various forms. Either they can directly ask you a question, bite cells are seen in which disorder? These kinds of questions were asked in past 4-5 years, right? Now, a clinical pathologic question is mostly asked. They can give you a history of a patient with jaundice, hemoglobin urea, they can give this kind of a peripheral smear and ask you what is the most likely diagnosis. Understood? Right? The important take home point here is that Heinz bodies are not seen on Romanowski stain. Heinz bodies are seen on the vital stains. But uh, these bite cells are seen on the Romanowski stains. Understood? Okay. Next one. Okay, very easy. I feel this is one of the simplest peripheral smear finding which you see. Can you people appreciate these cells, students? These ones, right? Don't you think they look like a sickle? The sickle which the people use, right? So, that is why these cells are called as the sickle cells and they are seen in sickle cell anemia, right? So, there can be a history of a child with jaundice, 
with splenomegaly and gallstones and they can give uh, any of the history of crisis like bone pains or um, osteomyelitis or any of the crisis or there is increased risk of infections right and they can ask you uh, they can give you this peripheral smear and ask you the diagnosis or very commonly they ask you the pathogenesis of this condition what is the pathogenesis of sickle cell anemia miss sense point mutation in which glutamic acid is replaced by valine at the sixth position of beta chain of hemoglobin understood okay next okay can you see these are the rbcs normally which you see but look at this cell do you think this is a normal cell this cell i don't think so it looks like a target remember in childhood we used to play the game of darts right uh, so this was the dart and then there used to be a target on which you have to hit the dart right so don't you think it looks like that this cell also so these are the target cells it looks like a target right and they are seen in thalassemia liver disease or megaloblastic anemia thalassemia is one of the most common causes of these target cells and thalassemia will also show microcytic hypochromic rbcs smaller and less color correct next okay what do you see in this image students can you see the rbc has got bluish dots inside it right this is called as basophilic stippling the rbc with bluish dots basophilic means bluish right so rbc has got bluish dots so this is called as basophilic stippling which is characteristic feature of lead poisoning also seen in thalassemia and can you see this cell students don't you think it looks like a tear drop right drop of a tear right that is why it is called as a tear drop cell and a tear drop cell is seen in myelofibrosis suppose this is the bone students and the bone has got a lot of fibrosis right these are the rbcs which are there now the rbc has to go through these this fibrotic bone marrow right bone when the rbc passes through it does not have any space so it becomes like this this is called as a tear drop cell and tear drop cell is seen in myelofibrosis or another answer can be myelodysplastic syndrome two answers right what will be the bone marrow aspirate of myelofibrosis of course there is a dry tap bone marrow biopsy will show black colored reticulin stain right <coughs> next in this image can you people see these cells now the rbc has got some projections and the projections are also blunt like this so that is called as a burr cell right cell with blunt projections that is called as a burr cell <coughs> and i'm sorry here can you people notice that the rbc has got pointed projections right that is called as a acanthocyte so burr cell is seen in uremia or chronic renal failure whereas acanthocyte is a characteristic feature of a beta lipoproteinemia another these are one liners which are usually asked right <coughs> next this is a rbc and this is got a bluish inclusion can you people notice <coughs> it has got a bluish inclusion like this right these bodies which are seen these are called as the havel jolly bodies and these havel jolly bodies are nuclear remnants students they are the remnants of nucleus and they are usually seen in post splenectomy if you take out the spleen of a patient right what you see in the rbcs are these remnants of nucleus and these are called as the havel jolly bodies they are also seen in megaloblastic anemia and thalassemia right so they are seen in all these conditions right next okay what are these cells which you see come on don't you think they look like a helmet somebody has worn a helmet right that is why they are called as the helmet cells also called as fragmented red cells or schistocytes right so schistocytes also called as helmet cells and fragmented red cells are seen in microangiopathic hemolytic anemias like hus ttp dic 
and prosthetic cardiac wall so sometimes there can be a history of a patient with damaged aortic valve and they might say that the aortic valve has been replaced by an artificial valve the peripheral smear is given below what is the finding which you see correct easy so all cases of a prosthetic cardiac valves or microangiopathic hemolytic anemias will show this finding correct <coughs> okay this image is a spotter which is quite commonly asked in fmg exam students inside the rbc can you see uh, something like a figure of eight arrangement right so this figure of eight which is composed of microtubules is seen in megaloblastic anemia due to vitamin b12 deficiency mostly right and also seen in thalassemia best answer is megaloblastic anemia due to b12 deficiency easy next okay this image again i'm recapping can you see these rbcs don't you think these rbcs are a bit abnormal uh, compare it with this rbc this rbc and this rbc can you see this rbc looks normal but in this there is more than one third pallor it is quite empty right quite empty uh, correct that is why this is a microcytic smaller rbc hypochromic means more than one third pallor so microcytic hypochromic rbcs as i repeat again and again they are seen in sita sideroblastic anemia iron deficiency anemia thalassemia and anemia of chronic disease also in the exams make sure you see that the mcv is less than 80 femtoliters so if the examiner says that the mcv is less than 80 i mean around 60 65 and gives an image like this you start thinking in terms of these four dds right in these four also students in anemia of chronic disease you will mostly see normocytic normochromic anemia sometimes you can see microcytic hypochromic anemia correct in contrast if you the, uh, see this cell students can you see these cells what it looks like don't you think it looks like this pen or a pencil so these are called as a pencil cells they are also seen in iron deficiency anemia so if i ask you two things what is the peripheral smear finding in a patient with iron deficiency anemia it will be microcytic hypochromic red cells and pencil cells correct next Okay, now sometimes the examiner gives you these images of the palms or the hands or the face, facial mucosa, right? Now, in this hand, can you people notice these nails which are there, right? Don't you think there is a depression in these nails? They are spoon-shaped nails, right? This is called as coilonychia and this coilonychia is seen in iron deficiency anemia, correct? Next, okay. Now, see this peripheral smear in comparison to this peripheral smear. These were smaller and hypochromic. And in contrast, look at these cells. Don't you think they are bigger cells with no hypochromia and some of them will be oval also. So, what are these cells, students? These are macro-ovalocytes, macrocytic cells, larger oval cells, right? And this neutrophil which you see here it is a hyper segmented neutrophil uh, let us uh, count the number of lobes 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 lobes any neutrophil with more than 5 lobes or equal to 5 lobes is called as a hyper sorry not uh, with more than 5 lobes i'm sorry is called as a hyper segmented neutrophil right now this neutrophil has 8 lobes so this is a hyper segmented neutrophil right and they are seen when megaloblastic anemia due to vitamin B12 deficiency. Easy? Okay. Next one. See a better picture of a hypersegmented neutrophil. Let us count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 lobes. Correct? Next. Okay. Sometimes the examiner give you can give you an image of a skull, right? X-ray of skull if it is given students it can be and if the patient has anemia it can be two things either it can be sickle cell anemia or thalassemia and the appearance is called as a crew cut or hair on end appearance can you appreciate because of extra medullary hematopoiesis occurring in the skull bones 
there it appears a spiky appearance it gives a spiky appearance this is called as a crew cut or a hair on end appearance seen in thalassemia and sickle cell anemia thalassemia is of course the most common cause right next okay see the nails in this patient this image has also been asked in one of the exams so can come in your exams also the nails look normal there is no spooning right but look at the knuckles can you see the darkish pigmentation of the knuckles these pigmented knuckles are seen in megaloblastic anemia due to vitamin b12 deficiency easy okay next image what is the students these are the rbcs which are there and this what i see here is the gametocyte of plasmodium falciparum another spotter which can be asked in the exams or they can be uh, they can give a history of a patient with fever with chills and rigors splenomegaly is also seen and the peripheral smear is here uh, what is the diagnosis it is plasmodium falciparum malaria right next here what do you see can you see a ring like thing inside the rbc so this is a ring form of malaria right next okay this is one of my favorite slides because this is very popularly asked in the question uh, question papers and a very very popular question which can be used in any of the papers right if they give you this kind of a staining this is usually a supra vital staining which we do for a reticulocyte can you see these rounded structures which not, with nothing in the inside them greenish nothing greenish inside them these rounded structures are the rbcs right in these rbcs can you see some meshwork which is there this meshwork students is composed of rna or histones and these cells which you see these are the reticulocytes so these are mature rbcs and these with something in them they are reticulocytes when the examiner is going to give a blue stain to you two of the blue stains are important and come in your exam one this stain supra vital stain that is brilliant crystal blue or new methylen blue for reticulocyte another is prussian blue stain which we do for liver or hemosiderin pigment correct so these two remember these two can only be asked in your exams as a blue stain right now the normal retic count is 0.5 to 1.5% the reticulocytosis is seen in hemolytic anemia acute blood loss or responds to treatment in iron deficiency or b12 deficiency anemia or decreased retic count is seen in aplastic anemia very very important correct next on the stain students the reticulocyte stains can you see these rbcs which are there don't you think it looks like a golf ball right when if somebody some of you play golf it characteristically looks like a golf ball so these are called as a golf ball inclusions and they are seen in three alpha gene, uh, deletions three alpha gene deletions that is alpha thalassemia and these are called as the hbh inclusions hbh inclusions correct next okay one of my favorite images students which is very commonly asked in exams in 2022 also in inict paper in november this image was asked this is the bone marrow needle right now three bone marrow needles are very popular sala's needle clima needle and jamshedi needle right so one thing which you have to remember is sala's needle has a side screw s for sala s for side right so this needle which you see with the side screw this is the sala's needle right in contrast students here i am showing you another needle this needle can be used for bone marrow aspirate as well as biopsy this is usually the jamshedi's needle right so sala's with a side screw jamshedi needle does not have a side screw correct now the other questions which can be asked from the bone marrow examination the picture of needle can be asked what is the <coughs> excuse me most common site in adults the answer is iliac crest or posterior superior iliac spine or anterior superior iliac spine in children if to if you have to do the bone marrow examination usually done from the shin of tibia correct then what are the causes of dry tap on bone marrow aspirate right the causes of dry tap aplastic anemia myelofibrosis 
थियोरी सेल ल्यूकीमिया ड्यू टू माइलोफाइब्रोसिस ए एम एल एम सेवन अगेन ड्यू टू माइलोफाइब्रोसिस दीज आर द कॉजेज एंड इन ऑल दीज कॉजेज वेन एवर वी हैव अ ड्राई टैप ऑन एस्पिरेट वी हैव टू डू अ बोन मैरो बायोप्सी वॉट इज अ ड्राई टैप आई एम रिपीटिंग अगेन ड्राई टैप मीन्स वेन यू एस्पिरेट एंड द नीडल इज कंप्लीटली ड्राई इट इज कॉल्ड एज अ ड्राई टैप करेक्ट इज ई वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रिमेंबर स्टूडेंट्स दिस इमेज नेक्स्ट Another very popular thing, students, is the vacutainer. Right? You must have seen that the, when a person comes uh, to take your blood uh, from a lab, he carries these tubes with him. The cap of these tubes tubes is coloured. Right? The colour coding usually indicates what is the kind of anticoagulant or substance which is present in these tubes. Right? Now, red tube is plain. Yellow tube has a gel, uh, which is used for enzyme and serum studies. the lavender tube has got adta it is used for peripheral smear or cbc or esr by wintrobes method the green hurry tube heparin used for osmotic fertility and immunophenotyping the pink tube is used for blood banking and the blue tube carries citrate right and it is used for coagulation studies and esr determination by westergreen's method very important right another tube tube which is left students is the one with a gray cap this contains sodium fluoride and that is why it can be used for blood glucose estimation because sodium fluoride inhibits the enzyme enolase right next students this image is also very important this is a improved nubus chamber which we do uh, which we use in our labs right <coughs> okay these images are also asked um these are two pipet students which are used this is the rbc pipet r means rbc red blood cell so it has got a red bead inside white blood cell has got a white bead inside that is how i remember also rbc count is more than wbc count right that is why when you see the markings 0.51 and 101 these are the markings of the rbc tube whereas 0.51 and 11 these are the markings of the wbc tube understood okay so with this students i finish off with the important slides from the rbcs and some miscellaneous slides which can be asked in your exams thank you so much everyone at the end i would just like to say please do not waste your time focus grows energy flows so be focused very focused right work very hard because there is no substitute for working hard right thank you so much students and all the best happy studying